polynomials multiplying two binomials. When you multiply two binomials together, we're going to be using the distributive property. We're going to be using the product rule. And the product rule, again, is when you multiply like bases together, you add the exponents. And then lastly, you'll be combining like terms. And like terms have the same variable with the same exponent. So here's an example. I have two binomials here that are multiplying together. I want to multiply the first term to the first term in the second binomial. And remember, when you multiply them together, and I have it grayed out here because you're going to be doing this mentally versus writing everything out. But you want to make sure that you have the 2x times the 7x. Multiply the numbers together and add the exponents. Now in this case, when you have an x, you have an exponent of 1. So you have x times x, which gives us that x squared. You're also going to take that first term and multiply it to the last term in the second binomial. So you're going to end up having 2x times a negative 5, which is going to give us a negative 10. And then you're going to take the second part of the first binomial and multiply it to everything in the second binomial. So you're going to take the 1 and you're going to multiply it to the 7x and you're going to get the plus 7x and then the 1 times the negative 5, you're going to end up with minus 5. So you multiplied everything through. Now your last step here is to combine the like terms. And the like terms here is that minus 10x plus 7x. So your answer here, pause and try. So again, you have 9x times x is going to give us 9x squared. 9x times 6 is going to give us plus 64x. And then you have that minus 5 times x will be a minus 5x. And then minus 5 times a positive 6 is going to give us a negative 30. And then we're going to combine the like terms here, which is that plus 54x minus 5x, which will give us 49x. So our final answer here is 9x squared plus 49x minus 30. Now we're going to work with a special case. And this is a squared binomial. A squared binomial means that I have two of these, mul two of these binomials being multiplied to itself. That square on the outside does not just get put to everything inside. That square means that I have two of these binomials. So it's very important that when you're doing square binomial that you write the binomial twice and then you multiply through. So you have 3x times 3x is going to give us that 9x squared. 3x times 1 is going to give us 3x. And then you have that 1 times 3x is going to be 3x. And then 1 times 1 is 1. And then you'll combine the like terms, and you're going to get the 9x squared plus 6x plus 1. So this is a special case. This is where we have a squared binomial. And you write the binomial twice and multiply it through. Now with square binomials, there are shortcuts for multiplying them through. And the shortcut is this. If you have a binomial square, you can simply take the first term, in this case would be a, and square it. And then the middle term is always going to be the two terms inside the binomial multiplied together and then doubled. So it's 2 times the a times b. And then the last term will always be the last term in the binomial squared. So let's do an example here. So I have a squared binomial and it's x plus 2. And I colored it so you understand what term is a and what term is b. So in this case, the first term is x. And that means that my x for the first term in the shortcut would be x squared. My middle term here is going to be that x times that b, which is 2. So x times 2. Then you're going to double that or times it by 2. So 2 times x is 2x times 2 would give me 4x. 
And then my last term will be the last term in the binomial squared. And in this case, we get 2 squared, which is 4. So this is how you could do the shortcut. Now I want to show you when it's minus. The only difference with the shortcut when it's minus is that the middle term will be a minus or a negative term. So when you're doing this example here, we want to first see we have the 2x as my a. So again, when I'm squaring the a, it's 2x that I have to square. So I have to square the number and I have to square the variable. And that's going to give me that 4x squared. Now my middle term is going to be the two terms inside the binomial multiplied together and then times 2. So the two terms inside is that 2x times 3. So 2x times 3 is going to give me 6x. And then I'm going to double that, which is going to be a 12x. So you end up having 2x times 3, which is 6, times 2 would give us 12x. That's going to be my middle term. And then my last term is going to be that 3 squared. So it's 3 squared, and it's going to be plus 9. The last term is always positive, because remember, whenever you square a negative, it turns to a positive. So this is the shortcut for the squared binomials. Pause and try. So again, either you can use the shortcut. The first term squared is going to be 4x squared. The two terms inside multiplied together, so it's 2x times 5, will give us 10. And then double it, so we end up with a minus 20x. And then we take the last term and square it, and we get plus 25. So you could use the shortcut, or you can write the binomial twice and multiply it out. The next special case is this. So I'm going to multiply this out the normal way, where I multiply the first term to the first term, and I get 16x squared. And then I take the 4x and multiply it to that minus 1 or negative 1 and get a minus 4x. And then I'm taking the 1 and multiplying it through. So 1 times 4x is going to be plus 4x. And 1 times a minus 1 or negative 1 is going to be a minus 1. When you combine like terms here, you see my middle term goes away. Negative 4x plus 4x is 0. Therefore, when I combine like terms, I'm left with 16x squared minus 1. This is considered a special case. And this special case is called the sum and difference of binomials. And there's a shortcut for this. So when you see two binomials that have the same first term and the same last term, and the difference is one has a plus and one has a minus, then this is the sum and difference. Sum means addition, and difference means subtraction. So the shortcut is you take the first term and square it, and it's always going to be minus the second term squared. So when you have a binomial that looks like this, where it's a binomial, and it's the same first term, same last term, the only difference is one has a plus and one has a minus. This is that special case, the sum and difference. The shortcut, you would take the first term and square it, minus the last term and square it. So you end up having 9x squared minus 4. And remember, it's always minus. Pause and try. So you could multiply this out, or you can use the shortcut. So you end up getting 64x squared minus 16. Now we're going to do dividing a polynomial by a monomial. Now when you're dividing polynomial by a monomial, we're going to be using the quotient rule of exponents. And remember the quotient rule of exponents, when you divide, you want to subtract where the higher exponent is and leave it. So when you do this, a division of a polynomial by a monomial, I like to separate it into three separate division problems and do each one separately. So I'm going to simplify each piece separately. And when I look at the 10x to the third divided by 5x, 
I'm going to simplify the number piece, and I get 10 divided by 5, which is 2, and I see x to the third over x. The higher exponent's on top, so I'm going to subtract, and I'm going to leave it on top. And remember, that x that we're dividing into really has an exponent of 1, so it's going to be 3 minus 1, and I'm going to end up with 2x squared. I'm going to the next piece here, and I see the fives are going to cancel out, and the higher exponent's on top, so I'm going to subtract, and it's going to stay on top. So I end up with a minus x. Now remember, we don't put the coefficient of 1, so it's just going to be the x that's left. And then the last piece, we see that the 5 will go into 24 times, and my x's will just cancel, so I'm left with my solution is plus 4, so my final answer would be this 2x squared minus x plus 4. Pause and try. Again, I think it's easier if you separate it out into three separate problems and simplify piece by piece. So I have 18 divided by 6 is 3. x to the third divided by x is x squared. And then I have 12 divided by 6 is 2, and x to the squared divided by x is minus 2x. And then lastly, I have 30 divided by 6 is 5, and my x's cancel out. So you have to be careful when you're doing a division of polynomials, because it doesn't always necessarily simplify cleanly. So when you're doing division, Again, you want to separate it into three separate problems. And now what we're going to look at is simplify piece by piece. So when I simplify the first piece, the fives are going to cancel out, and I see the highest exponent is on top. So I'm going to simplify, and it's going to be left on top. So I end up with just x. And again, we're not going to have a coefficient of 1. In the next piece, I see 9 divided by 5, that will not simplify, but that x squared over x squared, squared will cancel out, so I'm simply left with a minus 9 over 5. And then that last piece, the 5 will divide into 10, and I'm going to get 2, but notice that my variable on the bottom has a square, and that's the highest exponent. So when I subtract, I'm going to leave it in the bottom. So my answer would be 2 over x. So you have to be very careful that you're using the properties of exponents here, and wherever the higher exponent is, is where you need to leave the variable once you subtract. So your final answer here is x minus 9 over 5 plus 2 over x. Pause and try. So when you separate this out, it's a negative 4x to the fourth that's being divided into this polynomial. So be careful with those negative signs. Because when you have the 4x to the fourth divided by a negative 4x to the fourth, that equals a negative 1. And then that double negative there is going to change that to a plus. So be careful, it's going to be plus. And then you have to reduce the fraction. That 6 over 4 is going to reduce to 3 halves. And then you also see the x to the third over x to the fourth. The highest exponent is on the bottom, so you're going to subtract and leave that x in the bottom. And then lastly, nothing can simplify with the 7 over x to the fourth, but that double sign I need to correct by doing the positive negative, and that will turn to a minus 7 over x to the fourth.